Hey, this is Brian Johnson. This is Jacob Johnson. We are with Masterpiece Archery Targets in Revolution Taxonomy Supply. We've been talking previously of our, of our four of our five killer buck shooting systems. Now, this is our last one, and they say you save the best for last. This one is really, really slick. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna have Jacob shoot this, and then after he's done shooting it, we're going to be able to score his shots, and we're gonna be able to look at it again the same way we did before. He'll shoot it and tell us what he, how good a shot he thought he made. So uh, he's gonna go back. This deer is at a given distance. I don't even know what it is. We just moved it here. I kicked it over at any given angle. There's nothing pre-described to what it is. I just wanna make it a, an angle away shot to make it more difficult so you have to use more judgment so you learn more. So Jacob, you go take your bow, shoot the one on the ground, shimmy up the tree and shoot it again, and then we're gonna talk like we did before, and you're gonna like this one, buddy. All right, let's get it. Hey Jacob, you did take a look. That's not bad, huh? Now, nope, not at all. we're gonna do something a little different. We haven't looked at the back side. We're gonna do something different. And I'm okay. not gonna let you look at the back. What do you think of your shots? Look uh, pretty good well, to me. So far, everything I've been learning, it feels feeling a little bit more confident about my shot there. Seeing the angle and getting to know my buck target and everything now, and the killer buck and everything. So we'll have to find out and see if it paid off. But I mean, what do you think? You think they're good shots? A little high, a little low, a little forward, a little back. Wait, what do you think? What's your guess? Um, well, there could always be a better shot, but I mean... Well, what do you think? See, because we're sighting in your buck. If we, if you shot at a paper target with a black bullseye on it, or we put a bullseye right here, you would know what you shot. But on the real deer, when you shoot the deer, you don't know what you've got until you get the deer open. Uh, I so believe, what do you think? I believe both my shots, I would have got the heart. Okay, good. That's what I'm going what for. What we're going to do now, before we look at it, is we're going to move the deer forward, okay. closer to your tree. We're going to put it at a different angle. Not even going to set it where you know it. Actually, you kind of probably might. We're going to set it there. I'm going to give you one shot on the ground and give you one shot on the tree. And then we're going to examine four arrows, two shot on the ground at two different angles, two shot in the tree at two different horizontal angles, but the same. Well, no, it won't be the same vertical angle because it's going to be closer. So this is going to be interesting to see how it comes so, because I can't let you see the back side, okay? Okay. So you get your bow ready to go. I'm going to move the target forward, and we're going to do it. Okay. All right, now, let's take a look at this one. What do you think about this shot on the ground? Uh, too high. Okay, you think it's a little too high? Yep. But you think it's still a kill shot? Um, it could be if I got some of the lungs, but I mean, for my goal, for the exact accurate killer shot, if we were scoring it, if I wanted to go for the hard shot and all that, you know, if we were graded by that, I wouldn't have done good for scoring wise. So you wouldn't have made a perfect scoring shot, you wouldn't have made a hard shot, but you would have made a, kill, a double lung kill shot, you feel? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. What about this guy here? That one I feel I did a little bit better. Um, it's hard to say. I think I'm going to be pretty close to the heart there. So you think you're pretty close to the heart? Okay. Yep. All right. Isn't it kind of neat to know that by using this target, we can sit and talk about it. You take anybody else's target and shoot it. All you can do is have your opinion versus mine. Yep. When we go on the back side, we're going to know. Yep. We're going to know. And I bet you I could take seven out of 10 archers that are, could hit a could hit a golf ball at 20 yards and put this target up and say, see where that heart is? Let him see where the heart is. Turn around and say, I'll bet you a Hershey bar you can't hit that heart. And they'd laugh at me. I'd turn it around and they'd miss because shooting the deer at compound angles is a whole different deal 
than having a circle on the side of a target where you know where to aim. Yep. And the purpose of this is to show you, and the more that you do this, you go back up the tree, you shoot it again, you turn it, you keep moving it at different angles and different distances, you're going to know, I know exactly where that hit. I know exactly where I should hit on that side. And when that deer comes, you're not gonna have to think where to shoot. You're gonna pull up, he turns, you're gonna put that up shooting, you ask, where'd James aim? Jacobs? I don't know. I just did it. Just like a basketball player, muscle memory. You do it yep. over and over again, it's gonna happen. You like soccer, so I should use soccer instead of basketball, huh? We can't use football, Jacob, because the Packers lost. Yeah, I tell you, don't so, get me started on that. Yeah, so we're gonna go to the back side. We'll move the cameras over there, and then we'll see what you did. All right. Okay, Jacob, now we've done all the shots. We've talked about it. You said what you think you hit. Now we're gonna find out. So we'll zip around the back here real quick, and we'll take a look at each arrow, okay? And I want you to tell me. I'm gonna sit down. And I'm going to have you, you're the one that shot it, you're the student, you're the one learning, so you tell the instructor what you think of your shots. Take each arrow one at a time. Well. And they don't know which one is which from the okay. back side. See well, how they're all point, pointing out all over fact, the place. I know for a fact, my first shot there that I had, when I took it from the ground, I knew it was too far back. I knew it was, uh, I had a good That's chance. this one here. Yep, hitting the lungs. But I knew uh, I wasn't cheap. I didn't achieve my goal though, trying to go for the heart, which is obviously what we all try to go for. And then my other shot, I was feeling a lot more confident that uh, by the angle and adjustments and everything, that I would have got to that. Now, heart. which one's that one? If I'm correct, this is your tree. You're close. The last shot that you took in the tree stand. That's your last yep. shot. Yep. So even then, you came in that high. You actually came out this low. Yep. Wow. And so you're happy with that because you hit the heart. Yep. Okay, what about this one? You, this is your one that was on the ground that you shot earlier yep. at an angle away. It's about 55 degrees angle away. Yep. And you went through the heart. You must be pretty happy with that, taking the arteries off the top of the heart. Yep, at first I thought maybe I could have brought it forward just a little bit, but I knew either way I was going to come close, and sure enough, I came out to make a really good shot. Okay, what about this one here? This one I knew... This is your one that was in the tree. Yep. This is about 16, 17 yards, and you're angling back and down. So what do you think about this? Well, I knew uh, that my shot was coming a little low. I knew I would have been close to the heart, but I wasn't for sure. I thought I shot a little too low. And But my, okay. ang my angles and everything coming back on these, though, I felt were pretty accurate. Okay, now I'm going to go through a few technical things that may be more complicated than you want to know. Yep. But just a few things to understand. Do you see how this one came out lower here? Yep. The farther your arrow enters in the back of the deer, the lower it's going to come out in the front of the deer, proportionate to if you had a broadside shot. It's kind of hard to understand, but if you would have had the same entry hole broadside, that you had on the other side, instead of coming out here, you'd have come up here. Because the closer you are to a deer, the, the steeper your trajectory angle is. You take that same entry point there when you're shooting a farther distance back, when it hits farther back in the deer, by the time it goes forward, it's traveling farther in the deer, so it comes out lower in the front. So that's an interesting thing. Actually, when you have an angling away shot, you actually, actually have to aim an inch or two higher, depending on your distance, to be able to come out in the middle of the deer when you come forward. Okay, now, you as in most hunters, and that's a come we didn't script this, believe you gotta shoot them in the heart, gotta shoot them in the heart, gotta shoot them in the heart. The reality is the spot that we're trying to shoot at is the spot that gives you the biggest area possible to shoot at and miss, still kill the deer. That's why I got the bullseye there. Okay. My perfect spot, which is in the center of the deer, center kill technology is right there. But take a look at what's happened. By aiming there, you missed back and high a little bit, guess what? You double lung the deer, he's dead as can be. Here, all your arrows are forward. Now in reality, if you were to make that heart flat, where that arrow came through the center, instead of, would have been right on the edge of that circle. So you would have hit the center kill technology circle, which would have given you a 14, plus you to come out in the heart. Same thing with this one coming down, if you cut the heart away flat in a flat vertical plane below the backbone, you would have come out about right there in the middle. We sculptured the heart three-dimensional because people don't want to see a heart that's just flat like it's on paper. They want to yep. see a real looking heart yep. that's dimensionally the way it is. Now this one here, this one here, if you came back into the middle plane, you still could have gone back farther and up higher. So all of your shots, by knowing where you're going, if you know where that spot is, by practicing this and aiming for it, 
you can still miss as big as you did, you're still gonna kill the deer. And that's the purpose of knowing that exact spot where to shoot at, no matter what angle the deer is angled away or what height it is. So uh, I'm just gonna wrap this up. This is our last of our five different killer buck shooting systems. This killer buck shooting system, this separates the men from the boys. There's absolutely no guesswork. This shows you exactly what you hit. This is the most fun one to shoot. And with the killer buck, it comes with the system with all of the different panels, with, your, with your, your two different front panels. It also has a decoy panel we're gonna get to next. And you're either a bag system in the back to stop the arrows where you score it from the front with the geometric shot placement system with the killer scope. Or we call this, we call this our internal organ bullseye panel because it's internal organs and it is the organs and the bullseye is in the center of the deer. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed these videos. I've got one other synopsis video where I'm going to do a summary of all five shooting systems of the perfect anatomy and of center kill technology. I'm going to try to condense it into a five, 10 minute segment for the people that don't want to get bored and listen to me talk all day, but they still want to get the gist of what is going on here. Again, the whole goal is to learn where that perfect spot to shoot a deer is at, no matter how the deer is moving, no matter how high you're in the tree, so you don't cripple the deer, so you kill the deer so he dies within 10 seconds, travels more than 150 yards, you've got meat in your freezer, and the coyotes are out there. They're the ones complaining because we're not leaving any food for the coyotes. So thank you, Jacob, for being my student. I yep. appreciate it. No problem. It was a good time.